Good morning. It's been quite the week. I'm headed to early service, and on my way there, I stopped to look for my Bible that I thought maybe I left in my car that's currently in the garage. I had to get it towed. What an adventure. Um, only to remember that I had it with me in school the day after I got my tar- car co- car towed. Oh my goodness, can I speak? So, it's at school. But, I'm looking forward to church this morning and just spending time worshiping God. It's going to be a good day after a long week. But, what week do I not say is a long week? Does anybody else feel that? Well, I hope you enjoy this day in the life with me on this calm, hopefully calm, Sunday. So I just enjoyed the 15 minute drive with a hot cup of tea and Christian radio on. Um, The message this morning at the church was about the intrigue of like sin can have sometimes and that we need to stay delighting in God. And it was just interesting that this week some of the verses that I've been meditating on have been about how like enticing sin can seem and that we can be deceived into it. And, like, it just fit with the idea of we can be deceived into something is intriguing and looks really good when it's not. And that we need to be staying in Christ, delighting in Him and meditating on His Word, praising Him, focusing on our um, praise to Him and allowing Him to sanctify us. So it was just very encouraging message. So now I'm at my home church, the Baptist church. That was Alliance this morning. Call me a church hopper, I know. Um, And I'm getting ready to teach the kids Sunday school class. We started working on a Christmas program already. Today we have a lesson on like thanking God for things because it's November. Thanksgiving's coming up. So we have a fun craft to do with that as well. And then I'm also playing in the morning service today. So it's a busy Sunday at my home church. But I'm very thankful for both churches and just... I can't imagine Sundays without church. Um, It's such a vital part of our Christian life to be gathered together and worshiping with other believers. hearing about um, Old Testament connections to the gospel, and my pastor's been going through 2 Samuel, and it's been so good talking about having loyalty to Christ and God's kingdom always prevailing. Um, And then we headed to the thrift store, as you just saw. Now I need to do a quick tidy, 
and change into some comfy clothes. Okay, I will finish the quick tidy later because I am so hungry. Well, I spent the afternoon working on crafts that I can't share because they're for Friendsgiving and my friends might be watching, but I got them mostly done and now I'm headed to play racquetball with my brother. My brother said he didn't know the kind of joke, and I felt like that had to be fixed. So he knows it now. Some gluten free toast with avocado and everything bagel seasoning on it while I watch the stew crew. gonna do some reading. This book has been so good. I would love to read this with somebody else and like talk through it. I know she has like a Bible study thing with this and I, I think it would be great. It's been so practical. I will admit at first I was hooked and then I was kind of like mm, I don't think I'm gonna like this but I stuck with it and I've been taking something away to like change in my thought process every time I've been reading now. So I'm halfway through. I'm excited to see how this book continues, but I'm going to get some reading time in now. Okay, let me just share this section here with you that I just read. It said, Paul knew we would spiral, so he told us to replace the lies with something surprising. In Philippians 4, he wrote, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. First, I want you to see what he has called us to. It's not just a suggestion, but a clear instruction. Do not be anxious about anything. Anything? Anything. How could Paul say that? Does God really command this of us? Well, Paul had plenty to be anxious about. When he wrote those words, you may remember, he was locked in prison with a death sentence on his head. 
Paul meant what he wrote. He meant it for one simple reason. This earth is not our home, and our home in heaven is secure. So if death is not to be feared, what exactly do we have to be scared of? God's promises give us ultimate hope in absolutely every circumstance. He meets every need. He will resolve in the end every problem we may face here on earth. Paul wrote confidently of this truth. And then he gave us clear guidance for ridding ourselves of anxious thoughts. Number one, choose to be grateful. Number two, choose to think what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, honorable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Lots of good stuff in here. Well, my family should be getting home pretty soon, but that's pretty much been my Sunday. Once we get back, my mom and I are going to watch the show that we've been hooked on, The Anzac Girls. So if you're into historical dramas, it's on Amazon Prime. might be worth checking out. But it's just been a very refreshing, relaxing day for me to refocus to start a new week. So I hope you have a great week. Bye, guys.